Hey, welcome to Thirsty Amigos. Thanks for joining me. I'm your host Reese. On this one, we're going to be doing Reese's Pieces. We're going to be looking at some of the bottles of my collection down here of tequilas. Uh, today we're doing El Jimador tequila, and specifically the Añejos. And these are the bottles that have the metal label to them. Some of these are limited edition, and some are not limited edition. And we're going to go over the... Um, the ins and outs of all these bottles. Um, I have some in the box that still have some out. I have an empty one that I've drank. It's good. It's a good tequila. Um, at least it was back in the day. We'll go over that too. And I got a little bit left of this one of the limited edition ones. Um, we are going to talk about the differences in the metal labels. Some of the boxes are a little bit different. We're going to go over importers that you should be looking for. So if you find these out in the wild, um, there's some of the older ones that you want to get and there's an importer that we will talk about and then the minutia is going to drive some people wild and crazy it's going to be too much for them but so just to warn you now we're going to get into the the details of all these little metal plates some are different I think there's three or four different kinds that I have right here just the plates alone and so let's uh, dive in and start talking about El Jimador Añejo limited edition bottles with the metal labels salute all right welcome back guys thanks for sticking with me um, okay we're going to go into these bottles i have separated them by metal plates and um importer so they're separated out right now um so we're going to start over here let's start with um importer first and then we'll go from there. So over here we have these bottles here. I'll put one here. Oh, yeah. And what these are, they have the metal labels. These are the old ones. But on the um, top of this one, it says Edition Limitada. So it's a limited edition bottle compared to one of these, the standard ones after they dropped it. They weren't as limited production and i am not sure on the production number so i don't think um Aradura parent company ever released that information so i'm not sure how limited they were the bottles don't have a an addition number on them either so so looking at this yeah you want to find the early ones that have that on and the importer that you're going to be looking for Let's see if we can get in here. Get this good. Um, is right there, imported by Sazerac Company Incorporated, New Orleans, Louisiana. So if you find a bottle that has that one, it's an older bottle, and that's a better quote unquote um, añejo that's in here compared to the other ones. There's a um, diffuser that was used, and it's in question. If some of these even were part of it or not part of it and um, we'll go over diffusers later but it's a it's a hurried up production method to process young agaves and fix them on the back end with chemicals and additives so and we want to stay away from those so these these limited ones were made before um, they were had the diffuser or they were aged and everything and then here's a little trick for all bottles of uh Eredura and el Himador um bottles on the on the label and let's see if i can get a better picture in here um you can see every on the back of the label of every Eredura in a humidor bottle there's a date and this one looks like it's december 4th 2004 you can see that top line of ink jet that's printed on the back of that label it's printed on the bottle technically in this case so that this bottle is from december 4th 2004 so supposedly the diffuser went in in 2002 2000 2001 2002 2003 um there's some good articles out there and i don't think anyone has honed it down exactly when but 
uh, this would have been produced before then and then aged before they uh, took it out. And I think these are aged two to three years, if I remember right. And then that's why it makes these a little bit before the diffuser. Or they could have not used the diffuser for this production method of their Añejos too. So there's some questions with that. So, but anyway, let's get into it. So this one, Cesarac importer. And on, the, on this box, um, it doesn't have the importer in it. But what we can tell it's the same. If we look at the labels right here you can tell that they are shaped the same they have and we'll go with this in a minute um you can see how the 1119 which that's the nom 1119 which is the nom of Eridura, is in with the box of the crt the regulatory body that certifies tequila so you can see that that has been squished in there pretty good so and if you look at the the detail behind the El Himidor, that is the El Himidor pr processing the agave the Hima de agave using his koa chopping the pinkas off the uh, blue agave the pinkas are the leaves. And this is El Himidor. And you can see there's more writing down here. These metal labels are really cool. Some are real shiny. They hit the light just right and everything. So you can see those two are the same. And if we want to, we can. So there's the addition. We can get into here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. There's the bottle in there. Excuse me. Let's pick the bottle up. Open this. And if we look down in there. Oh, let's look it up. Uh, there it is. This is in there. So this should be a Sazerac. Yeah, imported by Sazerac. There you go. So some, so um, the one that I have that's empty, I did not have a box for it. So it was found in the wild like that. So you're not going to find a box every time with them, but you, uh, you just might. And if you do, that's just an added bonus. It's still sealed in the box and everything. So these two are the older ones that you want to look for. And retail back in the day when these came out, they were $100 a piece. And some places still uh, charge $100 for them, or more now, since they're out of production. They do not make these anymore in the metal labels. They now have them in bottles like this one. So this is what the... And you, know, and you can tell that they kept the El Himidor theme, which is pretty cool that they kept that. So that's neat. Just reversed it. But I haven't tasted the El Himidor Añejo besides these right here so i'm not sure if we should probably do a tasting here pretty soon to to see so that is those bottles next we have these where they changed it to um not limited edition on the labels and they changed the distributor the importer to brown foreman so now they're brown foreman. You can see they put a label. So this bottle is actually the same as this one that has a limited edition on it. All they do is put a sticker over the importer information down here at the bottom. And you can tell that by looking through through there with a flashlight. I don't know if it's going to show up, but it might. If you look right above the barcode, right here, it'll say says right and there's by there's Louisiana, LA right there, or New Orleans. So there you can kind of see it, Cesarac, imported by Cesarac, being incorporated. 
So this was an older bottle. Doesn't mean it wasn't. Well, I haven't tasted it side by side to see if they are the same juice as the one from the limited edition, but they're definitely an older bottle just with a label over it. And on these, let's see if we can get a good zoom in on this one. Don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. So this is from March 31st, 2006. So this is from 2006, so two years after the limited edition ones. So, odds are these may have been diffuser juice if they were using it for these bottles or not. And then on here on this label, the metal label is a little bit different. Still says Tequila Añejo at the top. Still has the CRT and everything. But when you look, it's a little bit cleaner look now. It's not squished into the CRT. The El Jimador is a little bit smaller and the relief has been pushed back a little bit. And it still says 100% de agave. So it is still 100% de agave. Alright, so next we're going to go to these bottles. These are all the same. Right here. Now on these, they've changed it to a real Brown Foreman bottle. You can see right there, imported by Brown Foreman Beverages, Louisville, Kentucky. So this is what the other ones want it to be. And this, this one says, Tequila Nia, 100% Day Agave Special Edition. And this one, if you look at the back of these two labels, you can see there's a little bit of difference between the two. El Humidor is way bigger on the Brown Foreman logo, or label. It's both a special edition, and there's more writing. And then the gold bar there, we'll have to, I'll have to look and see if that's coming with anything or, or not. So those are the differences between those. So this is a real Brown Foreman. And then on the labels, on these two, they have... It's a lot cleaner look, and it looks more, oh, more industrial looking on the graphics, if, uh, if that makes sense. It's a little bit different looking than the other ones, but I'll, I'll do a comparison of all three of the labels that we have here. So those are the boxes. Um, speaking of boxes, we have this box here that it used to come in. Back in the day, it was this uh, metal labeled box. It has a little clasp on it that you can open. And it was a nice oak. This, look at that oak on the back. It's real nice. Did a good job on it. Excuse my dust a little bit. There's the hinges on it. So, uh, so one of these limited edition bottles would be sitting in here like that. So, type it. there you go. So that's how it would look, the presentation in the liquor store. And they did these for a little while. So it's pretty neat packaging, if you ask me. That's pretty cool. So that's how some of the limited edition ones were packaged back in the day. So that's a cool box. Let's see. All right, so let's look at these boxes real quick. We'll compare these two, um, the fronts and everything. If you look, the gold on this one on the left, the Brown Foreman, is a lot shinier than the one on the left. If I just said that right. I'll say 100% agave. The, um, the, I guess we just call it, the, Detail on the one on the left is a little fancier. It has more embellishments on the letters and everything. And then down here on the other one, it's got some some kind of dots going on. And then this one does not. 
both say El Humidor on the side. And then on the back, <laughs> there's a little bit of difference here. Again, you can kind of see the difference in the the gold relief on both. This one's a lot more gold color. And this one has like chrome and gold look to it. And then down here, this box is, just says Echo in Mexico. And then this one has where it's made at in Amatitan, Jalisco. So, yeah. And it's, uh, again, Eradora makes El Humidor as its budget brand. Alright, so real quick, let's look at these labels in order of release. And we can start to see some of the differences on them. Let me get a little closer here. Okay, so on these, you can start to see the older. So as it goes from older to not as old to the newest of these that I have. So if you look at this one, you can see the humidor is bigger. And it has more of the the sky in there and the humidor is a little bit higher up on the label and then on this one you can tell it has been shrunken a little bit and it's it's a uh, more back in the background for everything the clouds are not there as much and then on this one it's more like i said industrial looking it's real fine looking on the detail Again, they enlarged it, and it still has the tequila on your hole, and you can see it's kind of a little bit different in its relief, and it's bigger. So those are the differences in these three labels right here. And these are the only three I know. If you know of any other ones, let me know, please, in the comments, and we can see, compare yours with mine, see if there's even more minutia out there of these labels. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on this episode of Reese's Pieces. I appreciate it. Hopefully the minutia wasn't too crazy for everybody, but, yeah, just some little things to look out for when you're hitting these down out in the wild. Know that uh, Sazerac is the oldest one, and that's what you want. And so as far as the flavor of these, like I said, I haven't tasted this new one yet, so I'm not sure. Newer. This is still probably, I probably got this about five years ago or so. And I'm not sure if the bottle has changed already. I'll have to look at that. But um, on on these, on the flavor profile and everything, I have a couple friends that are big bourbon drinkers. And they don't like tequila as much. And I, get, I bring these out when I can. They have a really big barrel, whiskey barrel influence. So they have a really bourbon whiskey uh, flavor profile they tend to lean toward that you can get the agave out of it a little bit but there's a heavy barrel influence in the flavor of it but it is it is good let's drink a few of these but yeah it's it's, it's a tasty añejo for sure but yeah try to get the older ones they're really delicious and um but yeah if you got some bourbon lovers out there who want to who's not sure about tequila you can and you have some of these definitely crack it open it's worth a try and I think that's about it, guys. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more. And if you got more uh, ideas or want to see something on Reese's Pieces, please put it in the comment section for me below. And I'll get to it and we can see what we can do and um, start searching all these bottles I have down here. Because there's a lot to go through still. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll talk to you later. Salud.